Right then, Dad. Right. Tell me about you. I've had a charmed life. Yes. I can't work out why I found out when I was young, I realised that the only thing I was really interested in was finding who God was, because I thought all these people, my parents are so worried about them. I say, who's God? And they can't tell me. This is obviously the main problem of humanity, a pretty funny world, fucking world, but I've been born into. And the main problem is they don't know who God is. Well, I'm going to find out, because I can. Well, And I worked my ass off at school. As a pupil? As a... I came top. I came, to, I went to centre of a, a, a prep school. Yeah. And I became, came top of every class every year. I went up and up. In the end, they said, that's it. And then I was quite unpopular. Uh, uh, why? Why were you unpopular? I don't know why. All right, then, carry on. Because I was an asshole. Okay. But, and uh, anyway, th they didn't like me, and I was always very extremely subversive. The headmaster didn't like me, he wouldn't make me a prefect, so Wh on. Which school is this in? It's Twyford School. Twyford, but you were young. Yeah, I was young. He yeah. could he could have done something, but he didn't. But he, he, he did some he did some nice things with you, didn't he? What? The headmaster was nice to you in other ways. He helped you with woodwork and things like that. Well, when I first went to the school, I met him, and my father said, look, be careful of Richard because we dropped him over his head when he was a baby and he spent 36 hours unconscious. Wow. And we know that he's he? handicapped, mentally got a problem. So what a bloody news for me, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck me. Anyway, what happened was that they put, him, put me in for a shirt. Oh, the English teacher said to me at the school, said, you must be the stupidest boy of the school. Why? But, well, because I was very, very interested in religion. There was a school chapel, and I made a balls of blowing the air for the organ yep. because I wanted to kneel down when the prayers were being said. Oh. And that was very hard to do that and blow the organ. So he got very angry and said, I was the stupidest boy in the school. Nice. But a week later, yeah. I went to the Sherborne. Open day? The Sherborne um, scholarship exams, competitive. So there were hundreds of us sitting in a hall doing these competitive exams in all the major subjects. Yep, yep. To get into Sherborne. Right? To get into Sherborne. And what happened was that I was expected to do well in maths. I, I did quite well. I got a B plus in maths. And that was a great disappointment. But I got an A in English, which was very funny because it was a week after he said publicly in front of the class, I was the stupidest boy in the school. The English teacher. The English teacher said. But the way I got it was, I, I just remembered, but Curiously, I remembered opposite stuff at the right moments. You told you told me that you 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 wrote about the stories your dad had told. Yeah, you. one of the questions was about King David, and the headmaster one evening had said that actually the biblical account of King David is flawed. It is written by two different people. He picked it to pieces. I think it was probably his PhD thesis. He had a theology degree. And I remembered it very, very clearly. And I simply wrote it down in the scholarship exam. And I got, they gave me a scholarship with Spain. They gave you an exhibition? Exhibition, yeah. So what, 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 what was the exhibition? They gave you money, they paid for your scholarship? It was piece? the same as a scholarship, but it wasn't quite so much money. Oh, OK. So you went to Sherborne? So I went to Sherborne, what? So, so, you, so you got into Sherborne now? Yeah, they would have taken me anyway, because it's a scholarship exam. and. I, see. I mean, no, it wasn't common entrance, it was right. for competing for yeah. money. Right, right. right. I got, I got, uh, it wasn't enough to pay my fees, but it was a lot. Wow. Compared to Brilliant. And actually my father, so I said to my father years before, five years, he said, I got a scholarship to Westminster. I thought, right, I'm going to get a scholarship to Sherman. And I was, but then anyway, he, I said, Would, will you give me a new bicycle? if I do, and he said yes. So I got this exhibition, and I waited for my new bicycle, 
And lo and behold, they gave my brother a new bicycle and never said anything to him. <laughs> I know the story then. Anyway, carry on. Carry on with your your with with anything about your life from there. From there. Well, the funny thing was that I sort of had benefactors. Yes. Why are you screwing your eyes up? Well, I think. I can't remember, but I had a nervous breakdown. And, well, I, was, I went to the Air Force, I got a well, leave. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sherborne, I want to hear about when you were at Sherborne, right? At Sherborne, I was useless at games, yes. and, and, um, and although I was in. I, was t I took my A levels at six. You took your A levels at 16, right? 16, yeah, my O levels at 14. Yeah, uh, yeah I went there and within seven months I had six O levels. Yes. So wow. I had seven months of tuition after yeah, which yeah. I passed seven O levels, wow. six O levels. And then, suddenly six, because later on I passed you another chemistry, one. chemistry, right? Chemistry. Art on something else. And chemistry. What? Chemistry. So um, you did that later on? No, I di didn't take chemistry. Well, but when I got to the Air Force... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I went there and they wouldn't put me into the university entry. So anyway, I, I stayed in the, the people weren't going to go there. I was a cadet, officer cadet. But they decided to send me in the end to university. I obviously, I, I mean, I, I used to help the maths teachers along, <laughs> things like that. And uh, they sent me and I had a nervous breakdown. I had no friends, didn't like it. They, 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 they. But the funny thing was, my best friend from, from Twyford turned up at the hospital just down the road and rang me up. So although I had a nervous breakdown, failed my exams, chucked out of the Air Force, and my father said, you've got to take your degree. So I thought, oh, shit. But anyway, John Fenton turned up and became a very, well, he was a very good friend, but he befriended me and saved me from becoming very depressed. Wow, okay. He was, and it was just magic, just when I needed it. And all my life, sort of things just happened, like... Can you, uh, sorry, I, I, I like the, the story of your maths teacher at Sherborne. What was his name? Dr. Cundy. What was his first name? Martin. Martin Cundy. Yeah. And he was best friends with... Alan, where the uh, um, what's his name? Thank you. Alan Turing. Turing. Alan Turing. Yeah, right? he had been in Cambridge with Alan Turing. Yeah. And Alan Turing said to him, "Look, if you don't want to get into the war, go and teach at Sherborne." Right. And he did, and that's how he became. So a you, master you had you had a bloody good math teacher at Sherborne, basically. He was brilliant. Brilliant. He he was. Yeah, he was very, very good. So your, your A-levels were maths, advanced maths and physics? Yes, that's all. I deliberately got... I wanted to not do any work at all, and I realised the best way of doing that is to doing maths, further maths and physics, and no chemistry. And so I was able to walk up to school every day with one tiny little book almost in my pocket, and everybody else from, from walking to school had five or six books with huge piles carrying it, and I wasn't. It sounds like you had life sorted out to me then. I just didn't. Did you Did you feel sort of? Well, I wasn't a I wasn't a rugby star, so I wasn't it wasn't at all. But you were a math star, weren't you? Were there better no, maths? No, but nobody gave a fuck about me but being you, clever. Well, so was anybody better at maths than you? Yeah, my best friend. Well, my friend at school, he was better than me. I sat next to him, and when I couldn't understand what Candy said, I said to my friend, "What does he mean?" And he showed me. And that was the only way I've ever been able to learn anything, <coughs> is to sit next to a friend and say, what does he mean? And they tell me. Okay. All right, then. So, any other stories from Sherborne that are interesting, funny? No. <laughs> so you got caned? My ambition. Yeah. Not, uh, Did you get caned? Yeah, once or twice, several oh. times. But it was always on. It was very unjust. That, well, it always is. Because... Unlike the rest of my year, who were doing, I, I was doing A levels. Yeah, of course. I was two, highly two stressed, yeah. and I was caned for 
not collecting my socks from the drying room and peck petty things like that. And what's something else? Bloody mean, aren't they, these teachers? Anyway. Anyway. So you, let's go back to how John, John Fenton kind of saved you from depression. Yeah, well, he said, come and play squash with me. So oh, I used yeah. to go around to the hospital and play squash with him. Instead of going to the university, Great. I'd go to... <laughs> and then I would go motor racing with him that he bought us. He bought some racing cars and we used to go to race meetings and I used to go with him. He bought racing cars? John Fenton. Did he? Yeah. How did he manage that? Because he was fucking rich. Oh, right. Okay. He bought a Mark I Sprite and he had an aluminium body made for it that looked a steel one so that he could go faster than all the other sprites. Yeah, but you don't want to crash in it, do you? What? He doesn't want to crash in it then, does he? No, but it was very, very quick. He drove me down to Saunton in it in the early hours of the morning in the summer. It was a lovely... And it had big racing tyres and... Wow, lovely. And he didn't mind... Oh, he was running it, quote, running it in, which was... He flogged it down there. Yeah, I, I, John Fenton was very rich and he was my friend. It was very nice to have a friend. Yeah, of course. Very nice. So what so he had a he had a sprite. What was your first car? Well my father gave like? when I left when I left Sherbourne my dad bought me or rather I yeah I What did he, he buy you? He bought you a Morgan. Right, so that was your new that was your new bike. That was the Morgan, wasn't it? Really? It was a three wheel Morgan. But I always was, I was also driving my father's Douglas motorbike. Oh yeah. And a and a BSA Bantam that he bought me when I was sixteen. You see, so he did buy your bike. He bought me in the end. Yeah. Not when I was fourteen. He bought me a motorbike when I was sixteen. Yes, that's true. He did in the end. I complained about the bike. No, I'm not surprised. Anyway, so your Morgan. The Morgan. Any, any stories about I around, took around the New Forest and your Morgan or on the on the motorbikes? Uh, I took the Morgan when I was in the Air Force. I took the Morgan Morgan to Pau in the, by the Pyrenees. I I flew in a Bristol freighter freighter from Lyd Airport. I got taken up in the air in this Bristol freighter. Landed at Latuque, where the, the, the guys had to unload it and they drove it round the aerodrome pooping because they thought it was fun. That was your, you took your, you took your three-wheel Morgan in an aeroplane to Po. Yeah, no, to Latuque. Le, Latuque. Oh, and then I drove down to Po right. through France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I rolled it over going down a hill and crashed it. But the police said, look, there's a mender up the road, so I... It still drove, so I drove it there, and he brought it to the campsite when he fixed it. Wow. It cost 30 shillings to knock the bodywork out. And so uh, we, we drove on down the Po. Who's we? Well, I was with a friend from the Air Force, but he was so pissed off with my driving by then that he took a train home. And, <laughs> and I went home by myself, I went back by myself. Did he pick any hitchhikers up? No. Oh. I went, well, it was a car. The car was looking like a wreck, really. I mean, he'd re-sprayed it, blown it over, but it was just a sort of knocked out with a hammer. Why did you drive down to Po? What was the reason to go down there? Uh, we had to do... It was an Air Force thing, was you have to go on an, a, on an adventure that you work out yourself. Right. Okay. And this guy was a Roman Catholic and wanted to do a pilgrimage. He was a... Singalese guy, and I thought, oh, that'd be fun. So he came too. Okay, so you got back. I got back, and actually, I drove to Alexander's house, which was at Crawley, and then I drove on back to my dad at um, Brockenhurst, and he was a bit horrified seeing the Morgan, I was sort of a, a wreck. And then I took his motorbike back to the Air Force. And his Douglas. Well, I ran out of petrol. Yeah. On the way back, and I only I had to get there with within hours. Wow. 
So I stopped, but the car that I just passed mm -hmm. stopped and said, are you all right? I said, I'd run a petrol. So he took me to the next town and I was walking there and uh, I saw a woman, it was a Sunday. I said, and all the shops were shot on Sunday. So there was a woman there putting her car away. I said, excuse me, you got any petrol? She said, yeah, there's two gallons here. So she gave me the two gallons. And then on the way, somebody picked me up, took me back to the bike, filled it up, went, drove back. Oh, no, hang on, I don't know. I, said, I took the Morgan. That was when I took the Morgan up, I ran out of petrol. That's right, sorry, another so story. So it was the Morgan, not the bike? It was to the Morgan, yeah. And it was before I went on that adventure. Oh, okay. It was in order to go to the adventure, I'd had to take the Morgan up to the Air Force, right, which right. was at Bedford. Yeah. So anyway, I ran a petrol and the guy who just passed gave me a lift and then the, another person took me back. And as I went, the gear stripped to the dynamo so that I had no lights and it was getting dark. And a motorbike, two motorbikes came along and drove beside me with their headlights on <laughs> and took me all the way back to the Air Force. Brilliant. Yeah, just magic. You, you've got this, this kind of protective guide over you there, don't you? It was very funny, but other times when someone all came, always came along and helped me. I know. Well, yeah, well, you've got lots of stories about when you went to Italy and places like that, but we'll talk about them later. Let's, we'll stop there for now, all right? Let's just stop there for a minute. It's time for the rugby. <laughs>